because I'm with LGT Capital senior market analyst Mikio Kumada live from Singapore. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Uh, I actually want to start by asking you about inflationary concerns we're seeing playing out on Asian stock markets at the moment rearing their head you might say. Uh, what are the prospects of a further rate hike in China or indeed other emerging economies at this point? Well, we, we think that the uh, recent decision of the uh, U.S. Federal Reserve to uh, resume uh, large-scale printing of money, to use a very simple term, um, actually increases the pressure on uh, emerging markets in general and on China in particular um, to keep on tightening, to remain on a tightening uh, path or at least maintain a tightening bias. That tightening uh, would have been there anyway, even without QE2, uh, but QE2 does increase the pressure even more um, as uh, it basically increases the amount of potential, you know, easy money that is available um, to reflate all kinds of assets, including, of course, emerging market economies. So uh, the tightening bias will remain, we think. And uh, it's not just about the U.S. Federal Reserve pumping more money into the economy, is it? We have a fairly loose monetary policy situation in most major developed markets at the moment. So yes. what, what will this divergence of policy, so in other words, the, the loosening, the loose monetary policy in the West, tightening in emerging markets mean for global exchange rates? Well, it means that, you know, the pressure on emerging market currencies in general, but particularly on the Chinese currency uh, for a revaluation will remain. I say particularly on the, on the Chinese currency because, of course, uh, the, uh, the Chinese government or the foreign exchange policy of China is to maintain a stable uh, mm -hmm. exchange rate versus the U.S. dollar or a very limited, uh, allow only a very limited revaluation. And, uh, you know, you can keep this going, of course, but, the, you know, as you keep it going and as the uh, monetary policies don't matter, each other, the pressure will just increase over time. And of course, Ben Bernanke, not surprisingly, defending QE2 and, and indeed criticizing mm. China for keeping its currency weak. I mean, what are the risks here? I mean, it doesn't, I suppose it doesn't fill us with a great deal of confidence the fact that China, one of the strongest economies in the world, is extremely concerned about, about being more flexible when it comes yeah. to the yuan, right? Yes, well, I, certainly my preference would have been to, to see China being more confident about its ability to, uh, uh, the ability of its economy to absorb a stronger currency or a tighter uh, monetary or credit policy, whatever you want to call it. The, the very fact that they are quite reluctant about this uh, is, uh, is uh, at least, you know, not, is not confirming uh, a high degree of confidence in the domestic economy uh, or in the global economy for that matter. Um, so it, it, it might suggest that, you know, not all is well in the Chinese economy, despite the fact that uh, we, of course, have uh, top-line growth. Uh, but if you look at the quality of that growth, there may be some issues here and there. For example, the inflation rate uh, uh, is, the inflation rate is keeping, uh, you know, is on an upward uh, track. It's accelerating, while uh, the growth rate of industrial production actually is moderating. So that's not what you want to have in an ideal world. Mikio Kamada, Senior Market Analyst for LGT Capital Management. Thank you very much. Good to get your thoughts.